Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I will be doing a DIY tub tutorial for baby slash hatchling crested geckos and I'm gonna try and do a step-by-step -step thing with y'all. Also want to let you know that Eros my bearded dragon is roaming around so if you hear stuff or if the camera stick thingy moves, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so let's get right into it. Uh, I will be listing the supplies first and then we'll go step by step on how to make it. Um, one thing I will say is I will be, let's just get to the, to the things first and then I'll say it. Okay, anyways, so what you need to get together for your little DIY project is going to be a tub. You need a tub. This this is um, a pretty decent size like shoebox tub. It's actually the biggest one that I've gotten for my Presta Geckos. But say that a like 14 inch by 7 inch, 6 inch. I'm totally guessing on this, but I'm looking at my smallest tub and I think that's what I would measure it at like 14 and a half inches by 8 inches or 7 and a half inches but yeah so something something of that size but we're gonna be working with this guy because I got them in a 10 pack at a really good deal oh my gosh I love I love bargains anyways so yeah first thing you need is a tub that took so long to say second thing you're gonna need is window <laughs> window screens window screening um, and make sure to try and get the plastic one okay um, more malleable, it's more gentle, it's easier to cut and easier to adhere to your enclosures. Um, I got mine from Home Depot. We'll need either a soldering iron, soldering iron, this thing. Um, it melts plastic and you can get it at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. I actually found one at my local Harbor Freight and it was, I don't know the exact price, so I'm gonna say it's under $5. I think it was like three something, but yeah. Mine's not in like tip top shape or anything, but it's just used for this. So, soldering, soldering iron, however y'all say it, however it's supposed to be said. Or, or y'all can get a box cutter and a heat source of some sort. What I used to do, and uh, well, mainly I didn't do it with enclosures, but I did it with my um, lay boxes and humid hides. Is I would get like Tupperware, and then I would cut a hole at the top of the lid, and then I would use the lighter to um, make sure I singe all the edges so they're not like sharp in any way. You got to make sure like all the edges are pretty dull um, and easy. In that case, for my leopard geckos and stuff to climb in and out of. And in this case, for the crested geckos to walk on. So, I will, be, I will not be using this method, but if you can't find a soldering iron, soldering iron, um, you could definitely use this method. I will say there is a higher chance of the plastic cracking. Well, the soldering iron it won't crack, but this, it might crack. So just warning you. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, also, you're going to want scissors or you can use the box cutter to cut um, the screen and then a sharpie. I didn't have that on the table, but here's a sharpie and um, I use a specific cutout pattern so I could put shapes of the windows that I want for the screens. So I actually used what I bought for my enclosure, which was cork bark, I used the tag thing right here and measured it like that. So that was my reference. But I would just suggest this, unless you want to freehand it, you can totally freehand it, whatever you want. Some um, plastic containers have like lines where there's actually like a decent box shape on there and you can just freehand it however you want, however you want to do it. Um, but yeah, and then you are going to need stuff for your baby, so stuff to set up your enclosure inside. And I think that is everything. I have my little list on my awesome napkin here, but let's continue. <laughs> so um, I already pre-did all of this just so the video is not like super long, but um, let's go through it. 
first step, get your tub. And then you are going to, like I said, draw out the frame you want for your windows. I have learned that a window on the sides is all I really need for because of the next steps I'm going to take, but um, I prefer two windows instead of four windows on all sides, just especially for this shape. Um, for larger enclosures, I would say three or four windows would be understandable slash reasonable, but for this, I'm just going to show y'all how I do it with just two windows. Um, um, so get that started, you can pause it, you can watch the whole thing and not do anything and just support me because y'all are awesome, but um, get that going. And then what you're going to do is next is go outside, go anywhere aerated, go anywhere that has lots of windows, go to your garage, preferably just go outside because melting plastic smells nasty and uh, it could give you a headache, it could just be really bad for you to inhale all those fumes. So go outside right now if you want, or like I said, just keep watching, enjoy. Okay, awesome. So what you're gonna do next is get your soldering iron and then you are going to pop out that traced perimeter. And I don't know if you can see, do you see the little stringies right there? Make sure to get all that junk out because it's like little annoying and like not appealing to the eye for us, but easily could be something that the babies could try to ingest, and we don't want that. So just like, here's a here's a half example of just like, just cut your perimeter, and then pop it out, and then you're gonna get these awesome translucent cards. Not really, they're just, I don't know, I'm gonna keep them in case I need them for something. So you're just gonna have a bunch of these, or two however many enclosures are making. So, after you're done popping those out, you are going to get your lovely screen, and then I wouldn't say measure it with the, with the cutout trace um, guideline thing you have. I would say put it up to the container and um, measure it out. I would say to make sure to um, try and get it to where it has a nice border frame around it because whenever you're adhering the screen you're gonna want that space to be able to put the glue or melt it down however you want to do it but just make sure you have a, a frame space so here is my mine right here and here is my frame for it so pretty decent also um, because these do have like the little grids I would suggest getting at least three, oh I don't know if you can see, at least three of these on the outside. Um, of course I didn't measure and count each thingy, each grid, each line um, to do this, but just like a nice eyeball guideline, just so, like I said, it's easy to adhere or glue or whatever, you, whatever you're going to do. So the whatever you're going to do part is next. So what you could do, bring iron again and um, as you're putting the screen down, you can melt along the edges. Um, and that, in my opinion, is a pretty good thing to do. I think it's pretty sturdy. I would like to try and go around it. So that's the main thing for having the frame perimeter outline thing. Um, what I like to do is streak it across at least three times preferably like five times you can tell that it's kind of melting right there like the little lines so once you plug this in for this part um, I would just literally touch and continue to go touch and go and that's literally all you need to do when I first started this I was like tapping it trying to get like piece by piece honestly if, if it's hot enough you can just make a line and it adheres to it. The other thing you can do, which I just, at least didn't, um, <laughs> because like less materials in my opinion is better, but if you want it to look more aesthetic pleasing or anything, um, you could get a hot glue gun and try and put it all there. In my opinion, I think I tried that, but I think I needed another tool to press down the hot glue and that's what I didn't like about it so I didn't use hot glue again it's like 
you would get um, like a spoon or a, a wooden stick or something. So put it on and then like try and like smooth it out. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, if that's better for you, if you enjoy it, go for it. <laughs> so yeah, just do that to both sides. Adhere your mesh to create a lovely window. Um, here are mine. There we go. Okay, and then the next step is going to be, if you want to take a break for this, from this because of all the fumes and stuff, go ahead and do that and then come back. Um, make sure to unplug your soldering iron or hot glue gun or whatever you're using. And then um, once you get back, we're going to make holes. Holes are really easy to do. Um, the only thing I would suggest is like whenever you're doing them, it's like with the soldering iron being so hot, it's easy to just poke them and just keep going. But if you're going at a fast pace, like that's fast. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to have backsplash of the hot melting plastic. Um, this happened to me quite a few times. Um, I try to go at a nice even pace now, but when I, when I do them I try to do like five or seven at a time. So I kind of like try and hurry that part up. But um, it's really nice. You can make your own like little patterns and stuff. What I try to do is uh, make sure I have this row up here. I start with the top row and I try to evenly space them and then the bottom row I go in between the top ones I did so it kind of makes like a zigzaggy effect or it just looks random, whatever you prefer. I like to think it looks zigzaggy. But anyways, um, and then I would suggest putting like the bare minimum like three or five little ones, little dots, holes. Little holes at the bottom. Um, I also put some on the side. I honestly don't know what I was doing. I probably just wanted a bunch of holes. Um, just wanted to keep it going. So I prefer, I would prefer if y'all did this though, like just three here, three here, and three here. But again, you can do whatever you want. You can make little flower patterns in it. You can do like three or four flower patterns across here. Um, just so there's like some ventilation on every side. But just remember not to put too much because too many holes will, um, air out your enclosure probably faster than what you want it to um, because you know the Cresta geckos they do need dry out periods they do need periods where you spray them down what I noticed is whenever I had um, my first one where I put screens on four sides I realized that my babies were having problems with their shed and stuff and it's because as soon as I sprayed it there was just so much airflow going, it dried super fast, and it didn't give them the time and the moisture, humidity they needed. So just remember that whenever you're making your little tubs. So, um, imagine there's a screen here. But yeah, we're done. We, we did it. You did it. You did it. So, what you're going to do next is get a um, uh, paper towel, spray some water, get some water, dampen it up, clean it out, or just like run it under some water, make sure that there's no plastic or glue or anything inside the enclosure and then you are going to get all of your stuff together to make the setup for your babies. So what I like to do is I like to put at least three textures in my baby enclosures. Um, I'll show you what I did for this one. This one's different than my other ones. I'll show you three other ones that I have. So. Um, this guy right here is my newest one. Um, what I did was I got this plant from Michael's. Um, I like these because they're chain. So if I this blah, if this is put in the juvenile enclosure, I feel like it gives them more areas to climb on. Um, and the leaves are pretty little, so it's like not super daunting or like too bulky for the babies either and also the chain you can just easily like just snip it off um, and it still looks nice so um, that's what I have as the leaf protection part and then I got um, a cork round cut it in half or just broke it in half and this is what I got um, and then 
I have some Chahula wood, Chalula wood. This. I have this. Um, I haven't put this in an enclosure before, but like I said, I like to have three textures, but I'm not trying to go out um, more than I need to. So when I brought all this stuff back, I realized I didn't get a second type of plant with a different texture. Um, and like I said, I like to keep at least three different textures. That's totally me. You can just put a plant a plant, I'm making sure Eros isn't pooping. <laughs> you can totally just put a plant, a fake plant, and call it a day. I don't know, I've seen some um, videos where they just have like the bare minimum, and you can, they're babies, they're, they just need to feel secure and need to be able to hide. But just for my babies, I like to give them different textures and stuff. Um, so, I'm putting the Chihuahua wood under the cork bark just so it can stay in place and create a little like cave area and then I'm just going to set the plant across like here and then that is my enclosure for my little baby. And that is that. Okay, so um, here are the three that I'm showing you. I really do love cork bark so that is what I have in most of my enclosures but also I just want to show you like the lids compared to the boxes they're all just a little different but they're all shoebox tubs anyways so here's the first one I have some cork bark and then this has a plastic texture and this one's um, more of like a thin plastic for the plant so those are the three textures there this one right here has the same type of chain plant that um, I got for my newest enclosure then it has this guy little thicker leaves like bigger leaves and then cork bark again and then this one the baby's right there this one has this um, wiry plant it came in the same thing it came like in a chain and I think it's at Home Depot. I actually got it from a friend, but I, I'm i not sure. It's either Home Depot or Joann's. I know I saw it in a craft store. Um, and it does come in like a chain. But yeah, so I got that and I put it in two spots. This is a pool noodle. Got it cut to size and have it here. And then again, the chain. So those are the three textures. This guy, the chain, and the pool noodle. So those are just some different enclosure setups that I have. All of them are lined with paper towels, so don't forget to get that whenever you are getting the supplies for your enclosure. And Eros is being rude and trying to attack all my leopard geckos, but anyways. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, here is the new setup. And yeah, if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to say something, leave a comment. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed the video and have a great day. Stay safe. Just thank you for all of your support. 